Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the 9B notes on interval notation uh, and domain and range. All right. At the end of this, you should be able to say that I can state the domain and range using interval notation, and also I can graph various functions using graphing technology, and then figure out what the domain and range is from those graphs. All right. So let's get into it. First thing we're going to take a look at is um, just the interval notation. It's going to have this it's got these strange brackets and the colon and all that kind of stuff. So here's what this all means. So the bracket, the beginning and the end, means the set of all using numbers. So in this case, it's a set of all x's. And then the colon means such that. And then you're going to have some kind of uh, range that you're going to um, have in here. So um, for example, um, what you have is if you end up with numbers that are between two numbers, like between the A and B, then you would have, like for example, up here, we would have A is less than X, which is less than B. All right. If the numbers are outside of A and B, then you can actually do a couple of different things. Let's do this. You could actually still put A and B this way. And then since they're outside, it's going to be less than, X is going to be less than A. So it actually just, the arrows are just going to point the other direction because greater than B or less than A. You could do that or um, you will often see it like this in the book. All right. Okay. With that, let's take a look at some examples. All right, so example two from page 273 says, for each of the following graphs, state the domain and range. So this one here, if you'll notice the arrow goes on, so it goes to the left and up forever, but it actually stops over here. There's no end arrow over there. So um, on this one here, we would say that the domain is, and again, it's going to be the set. So the set of all numbers x such that x in this case is going to be 8 or smaller. So x is going to be less than or equal to 8. Okay, and that's our domain. Okay, range is going to be, now we're going to be talking about the y's, so the set of all y's such that if you'll notice the y starts down at negative 2 and it goes up forever and ever so y is going to be greater than or equal to negative 2 and that's the range for that all right so this one over here domain is x such that let's see the x goes forever to the left forever and ever to the right so x is you could just put all real numbers that would be fine um, and then the range is the set of all numbers it's the most set of all y's such that the y if you'll again you'll notice the y starts at is at the lowest it ever gets is at negative one. It goes negative one and it just goes up forever and ever both ways. So y is going to be greater than or equal to negative one. Okay. So that is the stating the domain range given some graphs. All right. Now let's take a look at some other examples here. This is not actually in your book. This is just an extra one I think that would be helpful. So um, using graphing technology to help sketch the graph, um, then find domain and range of the function. So you've got this crazy looking thing here that probably are not sure what that looks like. But again, it says use graphing technology. Um, there should be some a few graphing calculators here available at school, but you can also actually do this at home there's some lots of free graphing calculator emulators online so if you just type in online graphing calculator um, one that i use for this example was this one here the online graphing calculator 
at the Holt McDougal or whatever. So I pick that one and this thing will pop up. And then to type this in here, you have to do three and you're gonna divide by x squared. So I did three divided by, and I did parentheses x squared to make sure that my x squared stayed on the bottom. Because if you did three divided by x and then you put squared, it might not give you what you want. And then we subtract two, okay? And then once you plug that in, you hit graph, and then it gives you this lovely graph here. And then so from that graph, we can then again go back and state the domain and range. So domain is x such that let's see if you'll notice the x's go forever and ever to the left forever and ever to the right but notice it never it doesn't look like it's ever going to hit in here and the reason for that is you can never divide by zero so if you put zero in for x you would end up getting undefined so you can't actually do that so x really is all the real numbers that are not equal to zero. Or you could also put, um, let's see, a little bit more difficult, but for some of you might be easier. So x such that, um, let's see, x is less than zero or x is greater than zero would also work, all right? So the range is the y's. And if you'll notice, it's down here. Looks like it's at about negative 2 and greater. So again, there's no way this could actually equal 0. It's always, always going to have to equal some kind of number because you can't take 3 and divide it into 0 pieces. So this will always have some kind of value and then subtract 2. So it looks like it's going to be above negative 2. So the range is the y's such that the y is greater than negative 2. And again, it can't be equal to negative 2 because, again, there's no way that this here, you can't divide 3 by something to get 0. All right? And that is really all we have. So if you have any questions, please ask. Thanks.